Does the martial art of ninjutsu work for self-defense? What's up guys, I'm Hardy Quest with Chapel Hill Quest Martial Arts and the Ninja Every Day. And I want to take a little while to talk about does the martial art of ninjutsu work for self-defense? In dojos worldwide, ninjutsu is trained in many different ways with many different emphasis. From historical recreation to like a moving meditation to self-protection, all those are fine reasons to train. It just depends on how you optimize your training. If you're going to optimize your martial art for self-defense, it has to do a couple of things effectively. One, it has to train you to avoid a problem where possible. It has to train you to see a problem coming from a distance. It has to train you to deal with relevant attacks successfully and these specifically should be assault style attacks and not like an agreed upon fight like an MMA sort of scenario. Not to say that MMA wouldn't be valid to train if you wanted to be better at protecting yourself. It should also train you what to do after the fact. If you effectively defend yourself, what do you do next? So the question is, does ninjutsu meet those requirements? When it comes to avoiding problems, I say yes, ninjutsu has a rich philosophical component to the training that when followed, it keeps most of the people out of situations where you may need to use violence. Does it teach you to see things coming from a distance? I would say yes. In ninjutsu, we practice defensive techniques against many types of attacks from all types of ranges, including walking towards an opponent and them attacking us or us taking the initiative. Does ninjutsu deal with relevant assault style attacks? This is where I say sometimes. Some dojos are gonna focus more on historical movements. They're maybe gonna spend more time on sword and spear and stylistic Japanese style attacks. But there are many, many ninjutsu dojos which have tweaked and adjusted their curriculum where they're dealing more with a handgun, more with a short knife, more with a uh, step in cross style punch rather than a lunging, uh, what we would call a ski. Does ninjutsu teach you what to do after the fact. At our dojo here, yes, we do. We, we practice many different things. We practice things to say after the assault, how to get ourselves back into safety and, and out of range from the attack should the attacker go to follow back up. So yes, many ninjutsu schools do emphasize that piece of the training. Let's look at what ninjutsu does really well when it comes to self-defense training. We practice many different scenarios. We're gonna spend time with people grabbing us, with people choking us, with people punching us, with people attacking us from the back. We do multiple attacker scenarios. We do scenarios with many different weapons of many different lengths from spears all the way down to throwing stars. We regularly train against weapons. So we've got spears, swords, sticks, batons, knives, throwing stars, chains, all sorts of ninjutsu weapons that we practice against so that the practitioners develop a really great sen intuitive sense of what's the proper range, what's the proper distance to be at to keep themselves safe. Ninjutsu prioritizes ukemi. Ukemi is what we call receiving skills, the ability to be able to fall and roll and move with a strike, move with a push or a throw in order to regain our footing and be able to get back up and get some space. So if you're pushed or hit or tripped and you fall, most people will instinctively stick out their hands to stop the fall, but if you land on your wrist, you could break your wrist, you could break your arm, you could break your elbow, you could hurt your shoulder. If you fall backwards, you could bash your head. So being able to fall, being able to roll is a real superpower, and it's one of the first things that we'll spend time emphasizing in ninjutsu training. Now, what can ninjutsu improve upon when it comes to self-defense training? One, we could benefit from more what I call reflex development training. That means getting in and doing little sparring games, little competitive games like grappling, like boxing, like uh, training with padded or protective weapons and get a feel for how things happen in a situation where we don't have a cooperative training partner. The weapons that we practice defending ourselves against for the most part are old school, antiquated Japanese battlefield weaponry. Could we spend more time, place more emphasis on modern scenarios and modern weapons? And I think we can. Ninjutsu tends towards the more extreme end of what I like to call the use of force continuum. 
most ninjutsu techniques lock somebody up, take them down, and try to incapacitate the attacker completely. And while that may be warranted in some situations, most physical assaults probably wouldn't justify the person using what we would call lethal force. So it would be neat if we spent a little bit more time practicing controlling, maybe even protecting the attacker so that we're not charged with using excessive force after the fact. This is a little controversial, but our training style has produced many delusional practitioners. You can see them and read them all over the internet. It has to be okay for us to question and test out our theories. I think if ninjutsu could get over that, we would be moving in a great direction towards being a very relevant self-defense martial art. Now, how can you make your training more relevant for self-protection if you're already practicing ninjutsu? Number one, I'd say test yourself and your techniques out regularly with active resisting partners in a safe way. Place strong emphasis on your personal physical conditioning. Get in shape. Ninjutsu prioritizes efficiency of movement so much that it's commonly said as if it's a benefit that you don't have to be in shape to make this thing work. And that while that's great in theory, when the adrenaline hits and you start breathing real heavy and your muscles get weak and you feel like your hands are made out of lead, you're gonna need physical conditioning to help you just maintain the capacity to do any techniques. Your physical conditioning is key continue to update your knowledge with new information and techniques as they're available. Martial arts seems to be the only thing that we're not allowed to change over time. Would you go to a doctor who only used a thousand year old techniques because that's what works in the street?